Welcome everybody, Steve here. Today we're out here sanding the front fenders and getting a couple other pieces prepped for uh, Project Grey. I'm doing it outside simply because I got Project Grey, I just finished painting the, uh, the, the cab and I don't want to get all the dust in my shop so I'm going to do all the uh, sanding outside. But first thing we got to do is make sure that everything's clean these have been sitting outside. Uh, that's just one swipe. You can see the pollen and the uh, sap that's been in the air. Spring is just starting to pop out here. Kind of nice. So we'll get these cleaned up. Then we can start sand. Now I'm just going to hit this with some 220 grit first and then we'll uh, give it another coat of uh, guide, guide coat and then finish it with some 320. Now I did a little bit of 220 on here you know quite a long time ago, a couple weeks ago and I got one little spot here that I'm going to have to repair. Probably going to be a couple more because these are not original fenders. We did skim the whole thing so very very minor but enough that you'll see it. That will bother me forever. So we just take our time. Like I said it's pretty cold. I just have to work harder. couple little minor dents. There's one right there. And if we come around this side, oh, I just fell over here. And one right there. Minor. We're just going to hit those with some two part putty. Being outside shouldn't take very long to set up. We can sand them out. Fender number two. With this one, I don't have any uh Minor dents, but I just got like micro little spots where I could just use a little bit more primer. So I'm just using a high build. Give it a couple little coats and then I think we're good to go. Looking good. These little repairs, I'm just gonna give it a light one with some 150. I'll finish it off with some 220 and then give it some primer. A light touch is always nice when you're doing these. I know a guy gets a little stressed out when you find a, a dent when you're just doing your final sanding, but you know, there's ways of fixing them. It's not that difficult. And it's gonna happen. Now 
Another shot of guide coat. Now we can start with the 320. Gotta let this up. Uh, gotta let this these areas dry for quite a long time, maybe maybe overnight before I finish them off. So while I got the 220 on the block, I'm just gonna hit the radiator grill. Now a lot of these areas here, you know, there's no sense uh, just, you know, hand sanding and all that stuff. We're going to use a palm sander for that. And it'll work out just fine and dandy. Speed things up a little bit too. liking this uh, sanding outside it'd be a lot nicer if it was warmer but you know you get to see everything it's just uh, I don't know I kind of like it well we're just finishing up okay so we got everything did everything with the palm sander that I need to do now it's time to finish everything up with the uh, block 320 and then we're ready to hang this stuff and then we got a couple more pieces to do we're ready to start spraying again Big job is all done. The fenders. Now it's just a little stuff. I'm going to do this, and um, most of it I'm going to try and do with the uh, just the, the sander because a lot of the stuff you don't see and it's pretty wavy because of the spot welds. But uh, the rest of it I'll block it out. Even though it's covered with the bumper, doesn't take much time at all anyway. So might as well just make it look pretty. Looks really good considering what it used to be.
it's turned out to be a beautiful day now. It's warmed up, sun shining, and I'm just going to keep sanding. I think I'm going to be able to paint this with the uh, fenders and the uh, radiator grill. So I'm going to prep it up. Just a quick sand with the orbital. That should be good enough for this. This is the back support for the uh, box, if you're wondering. Nice day like this, I'm just going to keep on going. Now what I'm doing is I'm kind of kind of working around the weather. Today is going to be a nice day. Tomorrow is not going to be so nice, so that's not going to be great for uh, today is Sunday. But tomorrow it's supposed to be raining, and uh, that doesn't you can't sand when it's raining. So, well, it, outside anyway. I don't like to admit to vacuuming, but I do vacuum the floor before I uh, do any painting. I find that's the best way to, to move any of the little fine dust. If you uh, sweep it, you're just moving it around and pushing it into the air. Time to get all set up here. So I'm looking at the uh, stand here and you can see how the thread is just kind of locked in there. Hopefully it stays there. And I just have enough room so I can get in there and spray all that area without, uh, without the stand getting in the way. It's going to be perfect. About the right height. here and get everything all prepped up. Just gonna wet the floor down and just use a weed sprayer. Seems to work really really good. I have to drag a hose out. that you got to take just to keep one or two pieces of dust off your jaw. But, if it can keep one or two pieces of dust off your jaw, it's worth it. We do our best. That's all we can do. You know, I don't have a $250,000 spray boot, which would be, oh, wouldn't that be nice? I'd really like to just give that a try one day, you know?
If you've uh, seen me spray before, you know that I like to use epoxy primer as a sealer. You know, it gives you a really uniform color to spray your, uh, your base over. And if you have any exposed uh, metal, it'll uh, seal to that much better. I like to uh, spray my sealer the day before, that uh, gives it time to uh, dry up and then I like to sand it with some 1200 grit. The sealer I find just has a little bit of a rough texture and but if you sand it just with the 1200 it gives you that really smooth surface to lay your base down with. It's just one more step to uh, a better finish. We'll give it a uh, wipe down again with some uh, wax and grease remover. A uh, quick tack rag and we're off the paint. I give it uh, two coats of base. It's usually all you need to uh, get some good coverage. And then uh, we'll let that set up, tack it, and ready for some uh, clear. Two coats of clear is uh, normally what I always use. Uh, if you're going to do any cut and buff, you're going to have to add maybe one or two more coats, but I find that two is adequate. It's even good enough to uh, sand out the little dust specks if you have to, but uh, it'll look good. Well, the fenders are all done, and man, do they ever look good. You know, not bad for a garage job. You know, no bugs, just the odd little tiny piece of dust, not very much at all, probably one of my better ones. 
but I took uh, extra care this time because springtime and it's hot and really really happy so now we're gonna let these sit in here for a couple days I'm just gonna keep on sanding outside and get ready for another spray all right thanks for watching stay tuned for the next one not quite done our fenders yet we want to undercoat them so that's gonna help with the uh, rust protection but uh, more importantly for uh, little rock digs and you know these fenders aren't as thick as the original so if we can give a couple you know a good thick coat of uh, undercoat that might prevent some of the uh, uh, the little dingers that happen with the with the rock and they're gonna happen it's just that's just the way life is but if we can prevent one or two of them from happening all good but I did some welding up here so what I want to do is I want to take some seam sealer and I want to seam seal the weld before I undercoat Make sure you're good and taped up. This stuff goes everywhere. <laughs> 